Okay, so in this episode of the podcast, we're going to be talking about how to add value. And I'm going to show you an example of how it's been done before and how you can do it. You can create wealth out of almost nothing. You can create value out of almost nothing if you just think about how to do it. And that's what we're going to talk about. You are listening to The Leader Smith, Darren Gertis. Okay, so in this episode, I told you I would explain how to add value, how to create value out of almost nothing. Value is in the mind or the perception of the person that values the object. There's nothing that has inherent value. Okay, so let's start with that premise. Now, I found this interesting article on CNBC, and this this has been done before, but uh, it, it says this TikToker started with a one cent bobby pin and bartered it all the way up to an eighty thousand dollar house. Wow, she started with a bobby pin and traded it away and traded it away and traded it away, and before however many trade at 20 some odd trades, she had an $80,000 house. Now I'm going to explain, I'm going to go through bits of the article and I'm going to explain the process because look, I, I've taught economics for a couple of years. I'm, I primarily teach management, leadership or behavior, those kind of things, but I've taught some low level economics classes. And I tell my students, look, wealth comes from production and free trade. So the more productive you are, all other things being equal, the better you'll do. The more you can trade with others for what you value, the better you can do. I don't try to create my own car out of whole cloth. I buy it from somebody who who already created it, GM or Honda or whoever, and then I value it as so much, they value it as so much, and we trade. That is creating wealth. I, it would it'd be amazing how long it would take me to try to build my own car. I outsource that and let them do it. Okay, so back to the story. This is how this TikToker did it. This was published on Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021, and it's just after Christmas as I'm talking right now. Okay, so back in May 2020, um, her name is Demi Skipper. She started with a one cent bobby pin. I mean, it was just lying around the house and she got this idea. Uh, and again, this idea has been done before. Somebody did this famously with a red paper clip and it's, it's been done in multiple ways before she said, who will trade me something for this bobby pin? And then th this started her trade me project and her goal, her stated goal from the outset, from the middle of 2020 until, uh, I don't know if it was the end of 2020 or early 2021, whatever it was, her goal was to trade it all the way up to a house. She was going to just follow this pattern. Okay, so Demi started with a one cent bobby pin. She, uh, about two dozen trades later, she bartered all the way to an $80,000 house. And she got millions of TikTok followers along the way. Okay, so it took her 28 trades. You can follow and, and see all the things that she did, all the trades that she did. Um, and uh, I, I'll put that link below so that you can watch them all. Uh, and yeah, she traded all the way legitimately all the way up to a house. Okay. She traded a trailer. She traded uh, tractors, a Peloton bike, jewelry, MacBooks, snowboard, a set of margarita glasses, and every step took her a bit closer and a bit closer to her goal. So she even says in the article that she was inspired by the TED Talk by McDonald. This is um, very famous. It, it, he traded a, a red paper clip and bartered it all the way up to a house as well. Uh, so it can be done. It has been done. She replicated. She had a couple of rules. So her rules were, one, no money could exchange hands. Um, now, with a caveat that she, like if she bought something or traded something, she would cover, cover her shipping costs in the process. Okay, we can forgive her for that. Uh, and then she couldn't trade with someone she already knew that would kind of, you know, look a little bit maybe sketchy. Okay. So she uh, had those kind of rules on the front end. Okay. Despite just starting with a bobby pin, the article says zero followers on social media, the project was almost immediately popular and attracted a million followers. So I'm as impressed that she got a million followers than as that she did the other uh, thing, just trading and trading and trading until she got to a house. So that was pretty impressive. So here's what she did. A bobby pin cost about a penny, let's say. Okay, a bobby pin, she trades a bobby pin for earrings. That's the first trade. The earrings are worth about 10 bucks. Then she trades for margarita glasses for the earrings, and that's about 24 bucks. Uh, then she trades uh, the 
margarita glasses for a Bissell vacuum cleaner. The Bissell needed a little, you know, a, an extra screw, wiping down, you know, some tender love and care. And so that's now worth about 60 bucks. She trades that for a snowboard. The snowboard is now worth 95 bucks. She trades a snowboard for an Apple TV 4K for about the value is about 180 bucks. She trades that for Bose wireless headphones, which is worth about 220 bucks. And so you're seeing the progression and as it's working through. She goes from that to an Xbox One. She goes from that to a MacBook Pro, which is worth about 400 bucks. She goes from the MacBook Pro to a Canon T6 camera with all the accessories. That's worth about 550. Then she trades for Nike blazers, a particular kind of sneakers. And if you know people that that like buy sneakers, that uh, you know vintage sneakers with a tag still on, like these people are like really serious about that. She traded the, the Nike blazers for Nike hyperdunks. So somebody who was a collector was looking for a different one. But in the process of trading sneakers for sneakers, something very strange happened. She earned about a hundred dollars worth of value because the hyperdunks are worth more. But if you didn't, if you were a collector and you already had hyperdunks and you're looking for blazers to complete your collection, well, it's worth it, right? Then she traded that for Nike Air Jordans ones, the original ones, the ones I remember when I was a kid in awe of. For it's worth nine hundred fifty. She went from eight fifty to nine fifty in relative value, okay? Because somebody found it valuable. Look, we do this all the time. You can't see me if you're listening to this, but if you're watching me on YouTube and you can find the Leader Smith podcast on YouTube, I'm wearing a shirt that says Murder Yoga. Okay. And now it's a funny play on uh, the idea of what judo is. It's, you know, murder yoga. It's, it's, it's like just hardcore. It's not, it's not like, um, you know, yoga, which is all peaceful. It's, it has a guy throwing another guy. And so it says murder yoga. Now it was worth trading the 15 bucks or however much it was for the t-shirt for me. I value the shirt more than I value the 15 bucks. And the person producing the shirt values the 15 bucks more than the shirt. And so we make an even trade but we're both creating value for each other. I'm getting more value. He's getting more value. Okay, let's back back to the story. So the Nike Blazers to the Nike, Nike Hyperduck to the Nike Air Jordan 1s. And then she got out of that game and went from the Nike Air Jordan 1s to an Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max. Wow, okay, so somebody values one more than the other. She traded that for a car. She traded it for a 2008 Dodge Caravan for $1,000. Now, the car had issues, so it was only worth $1,000. But the right mechanic is going to value that and be able to fix it and find value and go on from there. She traded the Dodge Caravan for Boosted Plus Electric Skateboard worth $1,200. She traded the Boosted Plus Electric Skateboard for a newer MacBook Pro, which is worth $1,800. From there, for a Feria a food cart bike, you know, like the food cart vendors are riding around selling. So, so she traded it for a food cart bike. So the food cart bike was worth $3,800. She traded the food car bike for a 2006 mini Cooper convertible for 5,000. Okay. And apparently those are hard to find. So the, the food cart bikes, um, she traded that for a mini Cooper. She traded the mini Cooper for a diamond and sapphire necklace but the diamond and sapphire necklace wasn't worth what she thought it was worth. It went from $5,000 value to $1,600 value. So she lost like $3,500 on the deal. Now, this is part of the problem. You have to make sure that you're um, evaluating things, doing your due diligence, making sure that something's worth what it's actually worth. So she actually lost a lot in that process. So she went down $3,500 in that one trade, but she got back up on her feet. She traded that for a Peloton bike. She traded the Peloton bike for a 2006 Ford Mustang GT Deluxe obviously with some issues to it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be at that cost. She then parlayed that into a Jeep Patriot Sport for $6,000. She par -traded, uh, parlayed the uh, Jeep Patriot Sport into a wild-bound tiny cabin for $10,000. And at that point, you know, a lot of people would declare victory and say, I got a house. I mean, it's a tiny cabin, but it's a house. Fair enough. But she kept going. She went from there to a 2011 Honda CRV for 11,500. She went from the Honda CRV to three tractor trailers worth $12,600. 
the twelve thousand six hundred dollar uh, tractor trailers to a Chipotle celebrity card worth eighteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So there's a note here that says the Chipotle card includes unlimited free meals for a year, and a dollar figure shown assumes a fifty dollar daily spend, and that's why it is worth eighteen thousand. So if you want to eat Chipotle for a year, that's pretty valuable. She traded that for an off-grid trailer for 40,000 and then the 40 the off-grid trailer was traded for a house. Now the trailer could be moved anywhere. The house is stable and she bought this house in Tennessee. Now she's from San Francisco. Nonetheless, she had this house <laughs> for $80,000 appraised house and she she did it all by trading. Now again, I've taught economics for a long time, uh, like low level, you know, 101, 200 level kind of econ classes. And I'm telling you, the way to succeed, the way to get ahead is by simply being more productive. And I give the example with more productive and I have a cup in my hand, right? If if I'm filling, uh, if my job, let's say hypothetically, my job is to is to fill a cup of water and dump it over here and to fill another cup of water and to dump it over here and to fill another and just keep doing that. That's That's my job. If I can figure out how to be more productive, like let's say I can string together three of these cups and dunk it and drop it. I'm twice, three times now more productive than I was before. That means I'm either going to get paid more on the other end or I'm going to have a lot more free time. I'm going to have twice as much free time. I'll be done with my job sooner, right? That's more productive. But there's another way to be productive as well. And that's what this is. This is golden. It's by trading. But you have to work at trading, right? So I think um, this is a brilliant exhibition of what can be done uh, if you're if you're willing to think through it. Like, so people have all these excuses and all these like, oh, the world stacked against me. I can't get ahead because I'm this or that, or people are discriminating or whatever else. No, you can do this. You can do this. You can get ahead by doing the same thing that other people have done in order to get ahead and you'll be successful. So I'm going to... Um, throw down a challenge here on my podcast. And there's a reason for this on my podcast, because the greatest thing about my podcast is that my kids listen to it. So I'm now here and now on my podcast, challenging my children to this activity. So we are going to start with absolutely nothing. And we are going to do nothing but trade to people we don't know in order to see who can win. And now I'll because they're minors, uh, I'll have to, uh, you know, shepherd each of the deals and I won't play dirty tricks or do anything like that. But uh, I'm I'm interested in seeing between um, my oldest son who works like, I mean, this guy works hard. I mean, he, he's, he's the hardest worker I know. And I think he'll do really well. But I also think my second son, things just kind of fall into his lap. I, I did an episode where I was talking about how, um, you know, he left the trash out and a neighborhood um, uh, homeowners association gave us a, a fine of thirty five dollars. And I was like, what? OK, well, I went to him with the bill and I said, here, here's the bill. How are you going to pay for it? Because, you know, this was your job. And he looked at me like <laughs> looked at me like like that's that's like he was like nine at the time. Eight. I don't remember how old he was, but that's half his take for the year. I mean, Christmas and birthday and whatever else. I mean, like he's he's not seeing a lot of actual cold, hard cash to his credit. He went the productive route and he went door to door asking for, you know, do you have any odd jobs? I got in trouble because I didn't take out the, the trash. Can I sweep? Can I rake leaves? Can I mow the lawn? Can I wash a car? And he did almost all those things and he made his money. So they went the productive route, both of them, but now they need to see the free trade route and how free trade works because you can add value just by doing this, but just by knowing what other people value and meeting them with those things. So Ian and Alex, I'm throwing down the gauntlet right now here on my podcast, and we're going to do it. You and I are going to compete and we're going to post everything and show what you what you've accomplished and uh, may the best man win. Now, that leads us to the quotation for contemplation for today's episode, and that comes from Jim Rohn. Um, Jim Rohn said this, learn to get on the good side of the way things work. And that's what the challenge is about, because if you follow what we're doing or if you're them and you're working through this, you're going to learn how the good side of the way things work works for you. 
sometimes we work on the bad side of the way things work, where we're paying the interest rather than collecting the interest. We're going to get on the good side of the way things work. All right. Stay tuned. We'll talk about this update periodically. Uh, and I'll be posting this on social media as well. So you can follow along. And I hope you do. Hey, thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode. And I hope that gives you some ideas and helps you think about, look, value can be created very, very quickly out of thin air. You create value when you say thank you to someone. When you actually genuinely appreciate them, you're creating value. When you give an idea that somebody didn't have, when you share knowledge, that's creating value. And it didn't have to cost you anything. So we're going to start with nothing, with an open hand and say, hey, what can you trade for this nothing? You'll see how it works. Thanks for listening. Talk to you another time. Mm-hmm.